In a previous video, when I reviewed the Zoltec Zoe ZT702S, we found some issue with the current range readings. The meter was giving wrong readouts when the current range setting was not matching the input jack's specified ranges. As a quick refresher, let me remind you of the issue I'm talking about here. Here I have a current source outputting 20 milliamps or thereabout. The actual value doesn't really matter that much. And let me switch the ZT702 into current mode and uh, do some measurement here. So let's uh, press mode, and first we switch into multimeter and current. Actually, you notice that by default, it switches to the amp range. And if you wanted the milliamp range, you have to press this uh, range switch button again after you have already switched into the current mode, as the milliamp option was not available before we got into the current mode. As you can see here, when we first switch to the multimeter mode, and uh, you depends on where the range is, if you are not on a current range, the only available range is for amp measurement. And once you press that amp measurement, you can get to milliamp measurement. So that was actually part of the problem, as a user who intends to measure a milliamp range might not notice that. It requires one extra button push and proceeds to the measurement directly. Now let's do the measurement. You can see we're currently in the wrong range for the input jacks. We're in the milliamp range, but uh, the measurement is actually in the amp range. So let's see what we get. Remember, we have a 20 milliamp current source here. So if you see, we're actually reading two amps. That is clearly inaccurate. To get to the correct reading, you will just need to press the range here to milliamp. And uh, let's see again. So now we're reading 20 milliamps. Unfortunately for this meter, the incorrect reading happens the other way around as well. So let me switch to the 10 amp input jack. And uh, let me leave the current range to milliamp. So let's see what happens here. You can see now we're measuring 179 microamp, which is clearly incorrect, as we're in the wrong current measurement range. Now if we swap to amp range, we will get the correct reading. As you can see, now we're measuring 20 milliamps, no problem at all. Now you get a sense of the problem, let's take a look at some of the other multimeters I have and see which multimeters have this issue, which ones don't. And some of the design changes manufacturers can incorporate to eliminate this range confusion problem. Obviously, meters with only a single current range won't have this problem. So this applies to a lot of the very cheap multimeters, like this Kiwitz one. And you can see we only have three input jacks. We only have one dedicated to current range. So this is actually a good thing for these cheap multimeters as you won't have this range confusion. But this is not always true for all these cheap meters. This ANA009 I have here, that you can see we also have three input jacks. But instead of having current with this dedicated current measurement, the current you can see here for microamp measurement, we also multiplex that with the voltage ohm measurement. So potentially this could be an issue as well. Let's uh, quickly check it out. Here the leads are in the voltage ohm and the microamp measurement range, whereas the dial currently is set at milliamp. So let's take a look here. So we're not getting any readings, which is actually correct. Now we're in the microamp measurement mode and the input jacks are in the amp range. So let's take a look here. And you can see we're getting incorrect readings. We are measuring 2 microamp, but in reality the current is 20 milliamp. Meters with mechanical shutters over the input ranges are also immune from this problem. The Hold Peak HD 770D is a good example. I actually like this design a lot, as you can see here. The input shutter physically prevents you from putting the probe into the wrong jack for the given range. And I wish more multimeter manufacturers are using this mechanism. It is very easy to implement and is very effective. Besides this simple mechanical design that prevents you from using the wrong range for the desired measurement, we also have seen designs utilizing split input jacks. And with split input jacks, you can actually detect which input jack the probe is currently in. So let's take a look at an example. My BK2709B has a split input jack design while well, it doesn't prevent you from physically insert a probe into the wrong jack for the intended range, you do get a very loud audible warning if the probe is in the wrong jack. So let me demonstrate here. 
Let me put it into, let's say, milliamp range, and let's plug it into the amp jack. You'll hear this very loud warning telling you that you are in the wrong jack here. So let me, of course, put it into the milliamp jack, and everything is working great. And vice versa. If I now change it to 10 amp range, you'll hear this warning again because we're in the wrong jack. Also, the range mechanism was properly designed in this BK2709B. So even if you ignored the loud audible warning and proceeded with your measurements, you still won't get the erroneous readings. And I can demonstrate here. So just bear with me with the noise for a moment. So let me put it into the milliamp measurement range. Right now we're in 10 amp. And let's measure the current source of the 20 milliamp. You will see that you are not going to get any readings. You can see here, there's no readings. Now let's take a look at some other multimeters I have accumulated over the years. Here's the HT118E. Let's take a look. Right now we're in amp measurement, but we're putting into the milliamp jack. Uh, it seems the value actually is negative, although we're measuring positive, but the value is in the ballpark, roughly in the right value here. Now we swap the input jack into the 10 amp range and uh, we're currently measuring milliamp current. So let's see what we get. And we're definitely not getting the right reading here. Instead of the 20 milliamp, we're getting 0 0.2 milliamp. And here is an HT118A. Currently we are measuring milliamp with the amp range here. So let's uh, take a look. And we have similar issues as HT118E. You can see the measurement is negative, although it is roughly in the right ballpark though. Now we set to milliamp range and we're doing the amp measurement here. Actually, this behavior is different than the HT118E. We're virtually getting no measurement here at all. So this may be acceptable in my opinion. And by the way, the chi width meter does give you a visual indication as to where you need to put in your input jack. You can see the LED lights up on the corresponding jacks. So that helps, but if you're not paying attention to the LED lights, you could still potentially put the probes into the wrong jacks. Here is the ANA70. Let's take a look. Nope, wrong value. Now change the range. Let's uh, take a look again. It's definitely not measuring the right value, but uh, it's not showing much of a reading either. Now let's try the same on this Unity UT61E+. And currently I'm measuring amps with the milliamp range. So let's take a look. Very good. As you can see that we're not getting any readings. And here is the same measurement with the milliamp measurement input jacks with the amp measurement range. Well, we are seeing some. Yeah, the reading is definitely off and also the polarity is incorrect. That is also something we have seen with the chi -width meters as well. But at least the current is in the right magnitude here. Here's the ET829. Right now we're in the DC milliamp range and the input jack is in 10 amps. So let's take a look. No, we're getting the wrong reading here. And let me swap it around. Still wrong reading. The behavior you just saw is very similar to what we see on the Zoltac as the current measurement range is in DC amp, but we're putting our probes in the milliamp jacks. So the reading is totally off. We can see it's two amps. So if we put into the correct milliamp range, you will see that the readings are supposed to be in around 20 milliamps. So clearly that's not good. And here is the Hentac 2D72. We're currently in milliamp range and uh, the probes are in the amp jack. So let's see what the readings are. Nope, wrong reading. Now I have swapped the range and also the input jacks. Let's test it again. Nope, still the wrong reading. This is almost exactly the same thing as we saw in that ET829. 
Here is an HDS272S. Currently, I have the input set to amp measurement, as you can see here, and uh, the input jacks are in the milliamp range. So let's take a look. No problem, as it's not showing any readings. Let me swap it around. Still no readings. This is excellent. So let's change it to the correct range and just verify. So now we're in the amp range. Let's uh, take a look. Yep, it is measuring correctly here. So you can see that the multimeter section in this HDS200 series is definitely well designed. And because of the multimeter section is essentially the same across the entire HDS200 lineup, that means that the HDS2102S and HDS2202S, they all have essentially the same behavior as what we just demonstrated here. In my opinion, any multimeter with a dial interface can avoid this what I call the range confusion issue somewhat easily, as the designers can design the switch mechanism to physically separate out the ranges with respect to the input jacks. Sometimes this might be somewhat difficult to do, but as long as the readings are in the correct magnitude, I think it is perfectly acceptable. And other multimeters with range buttons will need to use relays or other switching mechanisms to achieve proper range separation. Well, I hope this video is informative and you find it interesting. Please remember to give it a big thumbs up if you liked the video. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel and get notified for more videos like this in the future. I will catch up the next time.